Hey guys, Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, I'm gonna be showing you guys 10 useful tips that will make you a better outlaw while playing. So these are tips that I found incredibly helpful throughout my journey, and some of these things I had no idea about. So anyways, let's not waste any more time, and let's jump straight into this. So at the number one spot today, one of the biggest complaints I've seen so far about RDR2 is they're frustrated that when they get off their horse, they don't have the exact guns or weapons they want or the ones they had last, whether it's a rifle or a shotgun. Well, if you go to the gunsmith and you go to the customization section, you can actually set your own custom loadout so that every time you get off your horse, you will have the same weapons. So what you wanna do is go to the gunsmith, the customize section, and you'll have a couple different options. You'll have an option to select your knife or your melee weapon. You can then equip a weapon to your shoulder to your back and then two pistols in your holster so that this time every time you get off the horse you'll have both pistols that you want you'll have a gun on your back a gun equipped to your shoulder and then your melee weapon so every time you get off your horse you're going to have that exact same loadout and this was always a big problem for me because sometimes i would get off my horse i'd get into the middle of a gunfight and I'd have my bow equipped or something like that, which might not necessarily be the best thing uh, for a gunfight. Or I might wanna go hunt something and realize I left my bow back on my horse, which was really upsetting because you'd have to go back and get it. Now, the only thing I wish Rockstar would do is allow us to have multiple different loadouts. So if we had like a weapons loadout and then like a hunting loadout that might have our bow and arrow and a different knife, that would be pretty cool. At least right now, I don't think that feature is in the game, but being able to select a loadout at least at a minimum is nice. Tip number two today, this is gonna be very useful if you are exploring the map. You can actually set down markers by clicking in left on the thumbstick and it will put a red marker on the map and you'll be able to view that marker on the index because the map can be a little confusing. Like sometimes locations show up when you zoom in, they don't show up when you zoom out. If you found an Easter egg or maybe a hidden cave that isn't located on the map, this is a great way in which you can save it if you're busy and you wanna come back to it without forgetting about it. Uh, I wish I had known about this on day one because there's so many little places I've explored, but I was too busy wanting to get other things done. And because of that, I probably haven't gone back to them. So you can set little markers on the map. It's a great way to remember important things that you discover or uncover throughout the world. Number three today, if you arrive in a town and all the shops are closed, but you really need something from them, you don't have to break in or wait around twiddling your thumbs till morning. Just simply go up to the door and hold down triangle or Y and the game will automatically wait till morning till the shop opens. Now, I have noticed that most shops close at midnight. So even if it seems pretty late in the night, like 9, 10, 11 o'clock, when most things in real life might close, uh, these stores do not. So I think it's really midnight until very early in the morning until you can't actually visit the store. But if you wanna wait until morning, which is a nice way to get it till morning time too, if you're looking for an instant way to do that, that's sort of a bonus to this feature, but that's something you can do without waiting around or like going on another activity and then coming back. You can just simply wait it out. It's much easier. Okay, up next, we've got a couple of hunting tips that I think are pretty useful. Number one, if you're hunting, you can actually use multiple different horses. So I don't know if you guys know this, but if you own a horse and you have that saddle on it, and then you have a temporary horse, you can actually request the temporary horse to follow you or you can get on the temporary horse and request your main horse to follow you. And that will give you two horse spots in order to carry large cargo. So for example, if you're hunting a larger animal like an elk, you can hunt multiple at a time because you will have two horses in order to equip their pelts to. So that's something to keep in mind as well. You can sort of double the cargo you can take if you are hunting. Another thing you can do, and this is sort of a interesting tip, uh, the only thing this would do is either speed up time or if you're sort of you know grossed out by this a little bit, it does help. If you're skinning an animal, if you put your horse on top of the animal, uh, it'll actually skip the animation, which isn't that long all in and of itself. It's only like 10 or 15 seconds, but some of you guys might wanna skip it. Some of you guys might not wanna see like an animal getting skinned, and if that's the case, 
you can sort of skip that process. Um, so yeah, that's a quick little tip. If you put your horse on top of the animal you're skinning, it'll make things quicker and uh, you won't have to go through the cut scene if that's something you want to avoid. Some more hunting tips, this time with fishing. A couple of things, you can actually use eagle eye to identify fish underwater. So if you're having a hard time seeing them, use eagle eye, the fish will appear. Also, if you do not have a fishing pole or you haven't unlocked it yet, which if you've played the majority of chapter two, you're probably getting close to unlocking it, have no fear, you can still hunt fish using dead eye and weapons. So you can use a bow and arrow, you can use a pistol, you can use dynamite, it doesn't matter. And you can also use dead eye as well if the fish are moving too quickly and you're unable to lock onto them. So I found this to be pretty funny and also pretty resourceful if you, for whatever reason, super need to get a fish out of the water, but have not yet unlocked the fishing pole or fishing rod, then that is one way in which you can go about doing it, which is rather funny to see people shooting uh, at a fish in a lake or something like that. I just think that's pretty cool. Another hunting trick you might be interested in, if you're hunting legendary animals and for whatever reason you happen to lose their legendary pelt, have no fear. If you lost it, it is going to be available at a trapper. Now, the only downside to losing a legendary pelt is you won't have the ability to sell it to the trapper. And most of those pelts will sell for $40, $50, $60, good money. So it's something you want to not do. I mean, it's obviously better to keep them than losing them. But if you do, for whatever reason, lose your legendary pelt, just know that it will arrive at a trapper. So you are not going to uh, lose it altogether. Like you, the, the game will not punish you if something goes horribly, horribly wrong and uh, you're not able to get it to the trapper uh, by yourself. So that's good news right there. I'm glad Rockstar doesn't punish players like that because so many things can go wrong. Like you fall off a cliff or you die or just something like that. And uh, because there's only one of those legendary animals, that's why it automatically goes to the trapper. A pretty neat maneuver you can do with your horse, if you spin the left thumbstick around in a circle and you tap A or X, your horse will actually do like this really cool like 360 circle gallop, which is supposed to be useful for changing directions really quickly, but I think it's fun to just do, to just spin round and round and round. Um, so again, I think it is to get your horse to be able to change directions or swivel around really quickly. I'm not sure what you can use that for. There's a lot of little tricks you've got with the horse here, but this one I found to be pretty cool. And uh, again, I don't know if you have to be at a certain bond level. Mine's bond level four, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I've unlocked everything. But uh, you can actually do that little spin move, which is kind of cool. It's like flourishing a gun. It's just like a little trick you can do with your horse. This next tip I found to be absolutely hysterical. So I was actually just uh, riding in the woods and I saw this blind guy who was looking for money on the side of the road. And I had never seen this stranger before, but I had read about ambushes that can happen if you try and help someone on the side of the road. So I thought to myself, is this guy lying? So he said he was blind. What I did was literally stood right in front of him and I aimed a gun at his face and Rockstar put that level of detail in that the blind man was telling the truth and he couldn't see the fact that I was aiming two revolvers straight at his face. Now, unfortunately, this came right at a time after I was doing a trick to avoid getting bounties, so I had no money on me. So I couldn't give this poor guy money even though he passed my lying test. Turns out he really was blind and Rockstar included that level of detail in there. But that is a good way to test because I have heard there are strangers and NPCs in the game that will also try and pull off that stunt. And if you aim the gun at them, they will run away in fear. So it's a good little lie test to determine if someone's really blind and if you should be generous with them. And last but not least, if you encounter a house that seems to have a locked door, but you know that there's goods inside, have no fear. There are other ways to get inside houses other than just knocking and opening the door. Number one, you can choose to blow out the windows. If the windows are big enough, you can blow them out with a gun and then you can just swing on in. Or number two, you can simply blow the door open with a shotgun or something like that. Um, also, something else I figured out while doing this process, if a door is locked and you don't want to use a gun, if you hold down circle on PlayStation or B on Xbox, Arthur will like kick the door open if he can, which is really cool. But anyways, that right there is 10 useful tips and tricks that will make you a better outlaw in Red Dead Redemption 2. 
I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Do you know of any other useful tips and tricks that players might want to be aware of? Let us know in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.